Wow, that one is gorgeous. Yeah, I held it in my hands. It's way bigger than you think. Really? It doesn't look that big. Is it perspective? <laughs> <laughs> Watch fan. Want me to start? You want to start? Yeah, you start. All man. right. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. What is up, Watch fan? My name is Michael. I am not the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop, but I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Watch Shop. Thank you guys for tuning in. Yep. Today we're going to be doing a live episode. Going to run over a couple of subjects. Mm -hmm. um, Philips upcoming auction, mm -hmm. and, and not just the watches themselves, but what this auction means. Philips mm -hmm. is coming off of an incredible year during COVID. We'll talk about COVID's effect on the watch industry, of and, course, of course. and we'll move into um, a ridiculous watch from Jacob and Co. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that is the an Godfather one. one. The Godfather. Right off of the wrist of Don Vito Corleone. <laughs> and then I want to talk about uh, Cartier, too. Yes, and you guys yes. know that I'm a Cartier fan, but I think that, um, you know, Cartier is doing something really interesting that you're seeing on Instagram. Cartier isn't talking about it, but mm -hmm. you're seeing it come up on the Instagram watch community. Most which Cartier is thing. Custom Cartier watches. From Cartier. From Cartier. Not aftermarket, no, anything no, no. like that. Custom, you know, kind of like Cartier Atelier, you know, pieces. Mm -hmm. What they are, uh, show you some beautiful ones and really what they mean I think mm -hmm. uh, to the luxury just like space the luxury watch space so yeah today's conversation is gonna be awesome also this video is our first sponsored video yes with audible yes. We're, uh, we're doing this video with audible we'll talk mm -hmm. more about that later um, you know I love books but I don't like to read yes um, I mix up the letters and it's yeah. actually a perfect partnership. <laughs> yeah. you know? Audible like, oh, sponsors dyslexic. I didn't guy. even know this service existed. <laughs> yeah, this is amazing. Yeah, I used obviously. to just have him read me books at night. Right so before bed. I would call you at like 11, like, hey, can you read to and me? And I was like, oh my God, like, there dude, has just to download be. Audible. Like, <laughs> so Speak annoying. and add. Yeah. Dude, just download Audible. It has millions of podcast books and theatrical plays. <laughs> Are you wearing a watch? Oh yeah. Oh, wearing the old DJ. Thing? Just because last time everyone was like, I, "It's a G-Shock." Don't we? like Christian and him are so different. And I was like, "We're really not." Yes. I have the same sweater. I bought the sweater because you had it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Big big difference when you wash it. Like I, I, I haven't washed mine yet. You have. <laughs> I really Why haven't. Just talk like I that really on live video. You know, I don't wash my face or my clothes. It, Taylor's uh, Taylor's boss. Taylor was telling like, "Oh, you know, my boyfriend has this raw denim channel," and she's like, "What's raw denim?" She's like, "Oh, it's just jeans, but they're." never washed and then he doesn't wash them and her boss was like it's disgusting she's like what for how long she's like what ever he just he doesn't sometimes he'll wash them but not usually are you guys uh raw denim people i mean you know michael's gotten me into it a little bit i haven't purchased anything yet but um but i'm i, I need someone else to convince me to otherwise i'm just gonna think that he's <laughs> yeah you're, you're like no one else he's like yeah you just it. sit in the poop particles forever you just it, there's and no that's need. part of the charm yeah it's actually more oh efficient. you wear underwear though <laughs> yes. 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 Yes, yes 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 but real quick before we start christian recently bought a film camera I did. I bought a 35 millimeter film camera. So you know what's funny? Every time that Michael and I work on a project, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Theo and Harris is, of course, a, a retail shop. That's what we were before anything. But now we've really moved into like agency work mm -hmm. and, and creating, you know, uh, content, right? Mm -hmm. For, for mm -hmm. particularly luxury consumer brands. Um, and, and we're working on a piece for Leica right now. Yes. And I was never a camera guy. But, you know, like every project, whether I'm working with Breguet or I'm working with Omega, whatever it is, or Gucci, you know, not, not, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. not that the video was affiliated, but we did it anyway. Yep. Um, I get really into the thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, really into it's it. It's true, I've seen it. We did a thing with Breguet. I bought a Breguet. Like, yeah. This was just like last month. Yeah. Um, we got into, we did a Leica thing. Well, I didn't take the jump into Leica. Mm -hmm. I bought my first camera ever. I've yeah. never owned a camera. A Pentax K1000. I don't even own a computer. No, he doesn't. This I, is, he I uses don't. his mom's iPad for these episodes. <laughs> I bought it. Okay. Yeah, okay. This is yeah. a company <laughs> iPad. It's a company <laughs> iPad. But it's pink. But, so I had a small gift. It's your first roll of film. Oh, thank you, yeah, you're Michael. Welcome. This is so nice of yeah, you. Yeah, thanks. I broke the bank. Oh, so what do you do? Immediately with this? pulls it all out. <laughs> Just ruin it. I'll I show you how to wait. load it in. I'll show all you how to right, do cool. the pictures. Cool. I'm so excited. Stuff. I will be. Um, I'm gonna be taking some film pictures. Instagram's guys. gonna go nuts. Instagram's gonna go nuts. <laughs> So Philips has an upcoming auction, mm -hmm. and there are a couple of you know things I want to talk about. One, you know, Philips during COVID, watch industry during COVID. Yep. And then two, some of the brands that have done incredibly well in the last year, mm -hmm. uh, and and the two that I want to talk about specifically 
And we'll mention other watches as well, but mm-hmm. FP Journe and Cartier. If you bought into those markets a year ago or yep. two years ago, yep. you made, I mean, you made a, a ton of money. Yeah. Period. And like, Best you made you gross probably made. money, Scrooge McDuck money. Yep. You made Wolf of Wall Street money. Uh, you made Gordon Gecko money. Bill Yum Gates. Bill, Bill, you Jeffrey made Bill and Bezos, Melinda Gates money. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen the jokes with, with uh, um, Jeff Bezos' laugh, how he's become like a super villain? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And it just pops out of nowhere. It's so weird. Everyone's silent. He goes, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> yeah. It's a rich guy laugh. But everyone's like, that guy's worth $185 billion. We could laugh too. Yeah. You, you know what I saw? I, I saw this on like, I was on YouTube or some shit like that. Uh, uh, someone, again, I, I don't do crypto. You crypto guys down there, salute. You guys are all fantastic. God bless you. Um, but uh, um, Ryan Serhant, who's a real estate broker, mm-hmm. like a year ago or something, was offered was offered 50,000 Bitcoin for a $13 million apartment. Mm-hmm. They said no. And I think today it was worth like $1.5 billion or something. Oh, really? What is... Hey Siri, what is fifty thousand times fifty four thousand? It's two point seven. <laughs> two point seven billion. That's amazing. Oh my God. Uh, anyway, not not the point. Yeah. Uh, so so of course I'm exaggerating. You know, watches are were not as good of an investment as those things, but crazy stuff. Yes. So uh, so let's get into you know watches, COVID, and then mm-hmm. we'll get into Cartier and FP Shore. Yes. So I went to the Philips um, auction preview just a couple mm-hmm. of weeks ago. Time flies. I, I don't know, three weeks ago, mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, and and first of all, the whole auction world is or the whole world is so different. Mm-hmm. The first watch event I ever went to, period, yep. was a Philips auction. There, I think that was their first auction. Mm-hmm. Um, they were auctioning off a, I believe it was a pink gold fifteen eighteen with a pink dial and a beads of rice bracelet. Wow. And Anna and I went, and if I can find the photo, we'll put it here. Mm-hmm. Anna and I went. I I think Theo and Harris had like just started mm-hmm. but like a Big week wigs. like a week ago yeah. <laughs> like it just started people were like so who are you and i'm like oh th- um, christian the theo and harris and at the time you know it's funny is i didn't like because i was getting the question who's theo so often mm-hmm. i considered changing my name to theo really? yeah yeah which wow. is because i was like you know what i'll just i'll just take on a persona take, take the alpha whatever the yeah legally changing no no oh, but like okay, you could just okay, change okay. your name and no one yeah, no one no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. People still think that your name is Theo in the comments. They do. You don't even yeah. have to work that hard at it. Yeah, I can easily be Harris. People are like, I've watched every one of your videos. I know everything about you. I hate you, Theo. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> wait a minute. Okay. Anyway, getting into that, that world, I, I remember what was so incredible was, and I'm sure that you guys have experienced this too, uh, and if you haven't, then you should soon one day, mm-hmm. um, but comment down below your first experience in the watch community. You know, for the first time being surrounded by dozens of like-minded people, Mm -hmm. for the first time being uh, in a room with watches that you never necessarily thought you'd ever be in a room with. Right. And just not not even being a kid in a candy store with like this excitement and you're grabbing everything, just Mm -hmm. actually not knowing what to do. Right, you're right. like amazed, and oh, on yeah. that night, the, the the wine tastes particularly good, mm-hmm. you know, and everything. Everyone is beautiful, and it's ju- <laughs> it's just the best, you know. So yeah, here right. I was, this college kid, mm-hmm. and I was just like, you know, in my glory, oh, yeah. you know, fifteen, eighteen, pink, and forget about that, like incredible watch Mm -hmm. seeing a date just you know seeing a steel date just i remember you know looking at a guy who's wearing this red sport jacket uh it's like plaid sport definitely from polo that's fine and i was like and i was like (laughs) i was like that looks beautiful on that black it was like a black ostrich strap i'll never forget it yeah right right so i don't know again like if you've if you've been in that situation you can kind of relate to my um Hitting something so like-minded. All of a sudden, you're in like a continuous... Like you walked into a conversation that you've been having by yourself the entire time. Exactly. Everybody knows your watch. You're not like, oh, this is a Rolex from 1970. They're right. like, oh, that's a Rolex. And you're, right. Like, oh, wow. Don't yeah, you just right. love like the vintage? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So, you know, whatever. So it was great. Um, but how, why is this relevant? Because the most recent watch event that I went to was mm-hmm. also a Philips auction. But now it's six years later. It's COVID. You got some bones too when you walk in now. Yeah. You know, we went no, to a watch no, event and yeah. people were just like, well, I know who you are, obviously. And I was like, uh, oh, big shot. <laughs> hey. Hey. So, uh, so uh, it was it was COVID. It was different. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the selection of watches at Phillips is f- unbelievable. Oh yeah, first yeah, of yeah. all, and their service is great. But um, but it's 
private appointment. Mm-hmm. There's no like, there, there's there's no wine. There's no party. There's no talking. Um, j- it's, it's business. Just, it's business. Mm-hmm. You get down and you look at watches in a much smaller room, and there's no big show about it. Hmm. It's just watches. Interesting. You know, which is weird. Yeah, you know, it's kind of yeah, weird. Very weird. But. It really does give you an opportunity, which you definitely had before, but you didn't really realize it, Mm -hmm. um, to actually interact with every piece. So I've interacted with a good portion of the pieces that we're about to talk about. Okay, wow. And and before we get into the pieces themselves, Mm -hmm. when when all this happened, when COVID happened, Mm -hmm. no one in the watch industry knew what the f*** was going to happen. Yeah, right. Everyone did well. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah. Um, Phillips had their best year ever. During COVID. Crazy. And I think that that's for a lot of reasons. I think that yeah. people being home and bored, they spent more money. Mm-hmm. But I also know that the watch market is getting larger every single day. True. So, so it's not just one variable that changed. There are continuous changing variables every mm-hmm. day in this industry yeah. and only for the better. So right. it's, um, it's really crazy. Yeah. So let's get into your pieces first. What do you think? What do you want to talk about? What we brought up before in the intro, the Cartier baseball was amazing. But even, we'll go into that in a second, all of Cartier's lineup. I just, that stuck out to me besides one Tissot, which stuck out to me. So I don't even know what Tissot you're talking about. Really? So I'll, I'll have to find it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not, I didn't see the Tissot. <laughs> um, no, but there are some incredible Cartiers. So the baseball's huge. Yeah, that's shocking. It's it's crazy big. I did not think it was going to be that big. Uh, Cartier and Cartier put the Tortue Mono Pusher mm-hmm. next to their modern Tortue Pon- Mono Pusher, which is cool. You're right. You know, they put was the, that day and night too. I mean, you could see the design language, of course. Yeah, clearly, yeah, of course, yeah. But um, but yeah, it's wild to see the evolution. This watch is from like the 1920s. Yeah, no gem then, on the crown. Know, yeah, no, nothing. Mm-hmm. And then you go to this watch from I believe the 90s, early 2000s, and you say, wow, the language is. Pretty clear. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. It's but. very. Yeah. You can just see, like, if you're looking at the older version, just the refinement, basically. Like, they yeah. took their design. And we're like, okay, we can fix this. Yeah. How about the tonneau? What do you think about that watch? Beautiful. That has the strongest design language of the 20s that I've seen in Cartier. Yes. And I don't mean like specifically Cartier. I just mean you look at that right away, and you necessarily don't necessarily say that's a Cartier from the 20s. You say that's definitely a 1920s watch. Yeah. Let me look closer at it. So now here's something interesting that maybe a lot of folks watching don't know. This is like real. Like vintage Cartier, mm-hmm. like knowledge inside baseball. Um, Cartier used to make their watches out of multiple metals, mm-hmm. even if you could only see one metal. So, like their case back would be by by metal. Their case back would be yellow gold, and the case was was white gold. Okay. Uh, sometimes the buckles were rose and yellow, or rose and white. No reason. Nobody could see this. I have no explanation as to why they used to do this, mm-hmm. but I look at it as. The most, like, it's like a quirky kind of... It's like of, a weird old Cartier thing. Yeah, it's <laughs> a weird old, like, yeah. I looked uh, The way I look at it is, um, old stuffy man likes to have fun, and you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, someone's asked Car- Cartier, like, why'd you do that? And they're like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, in fact, yeah. they did a yellow gold case back and a white gold. It's just... That's the best part is... Oh, it's, actually just... a pl- it's actually a platinum case and a yellow gold case back. I mean, it's The awesome. best part is there's no, there's no reason. No reason. There's no, there's no, no corrosive. Not, not, not so far. Not I that know. I know, yeah. You know. Well, it could be the gold they thought was less corrosive at the time. I don't think so. How big was the baseball, though? Like, if you had to give it an estimate. Oh, yeah, it's impossible. That I, I, I legitimately couldn't tell you. 30, so they, okay, they had a 35.5, but even that's misleading. I mean, I this watch fits, I don't know. Look at this. Look at this. Rose and yellow. Oh, wow, yeah. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. You look look how big that is. Yeah, that's that's a chunky watch. It's a chunky watch, man. Baby got back. Baby got back. Baby thick with two Q's. Baby thick with two Q's. <laughs> okay, so that, that was the Cartier selection. Mm-hmm. Um, Cartier, you couldn't have missed if you bought into Cartier five years ago. No. Even right now, I think you not can't, but basically can't miss. I was going to say, Cartier. can you miss them? No, you really can't. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, still, no. Mm-hmm. You can buy, you know, I've been at auctions where I've seen some of the rarest Cartiers go for, you know, $75,000, which is like, again, a lot of money. But, but I could easily see that in those markets mm-hmm. because, again, they've only, they only produced three of those watches or baseball. Yeah. There's only two baseballs in the world. It's, yeah, it's like crazy. So all you need is 
three people to want those watches. Yeah, and, right. And you know, three people in the entire world deem them mm-hmm. collectible, and they skyrocket. Which Cartier only... Unlike- oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, unlike with Rolex, specifically, mm-hmm. where, or like the Paul Newman, where you need hundreds of people to all agree that these are worth more. Right, With Cartier, right. you need you need three guys. Yeah. I was going to say, and you have that audience, because Cartier, even modern Cartier, does not make big sizes, or like big quantities of watches, right. and everybody dives on them. Right. So I'm sure if they make 100 watches, very exclusive, and everybody buys them immediately, that market also wants an older Cartier baseball. Exactly. Especially if there's only two. Exactly. FP Jordan for a second. Of course. Um, going into COVID, again, no one really knew what to do. People, mm-hmm. they weren't, I mean, people were bored and buying, but I didn't I didn't know that many people that bought strategically. Some right. folks did. Mm-hmm. And FP Jordan was one of those brands. Dive on. I know people that made hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars in FP Jordan in the last 14 months. Insane. Yeah. What's the, what's the growth looking like? Because I, I haven't followed that Peugeot in market at all. I mean, it depends model to model, but like I know a dude that was buying, that he bought, I think it was like a Jade Tubillon for like a hundred and something thousand that ultimately ended up being 470 thousand. Like, you know, just 300,000 in a clip. Just boom. Yeah, that, that was a good day. Yeah. You're like, what the f-? Yeah, right. You know? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, here's another stupid little example. Not as big, but mm-hmm. uh, Chronomet Blue. Mm-hmm. This is a Chronomet Blue is a watch that everyone's wanted for a while. Yeah, it's infamous. Infamous watch. Mm-hmm. I think the retail was like twenty seven thousand dollars. Generally, they were trading, you know, in the high twenties, thirties, whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, no, the estimate is between twenty and forty. This watch could easily be seventy five thousand dollars now. Why? That's a big difference. Yeah. That's a big number. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, ev- everything in Jorn basically, and this auction has quite a bit of Jorn. Uh, I think that you know, they, obviously Phillips knew that this oh, is yeah. like, the hottest brand right now, and um, and 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 it's it's you can't lose. Yeah, right. You know, or right. from their perspective, they can't lose. Yeah, the buyers may end up losing someday, but yeah, but, but they can, they will not lose. <laughs> these right, guys right. will not lose. Right now, it's exploding. They will crush mm-hmm. on Jorn. Mm-hmm. So I think that's definitely a brand to watch here. Uh, anything else we wanted to uh, jump into real quick? The Thunderbird was really notable. I thought that was probably the cleanest Thunderbird I've ever seen. This? Yep. Yeah, it's that that wild. looks like straight out of the box. Yeah, I a mean, little oxidation. It, it, Oxid- yeah, oh, there's a Tissot. It's great. There's a Tissot as well. This is a Tissot is a beautiful watch. Oh yeah. Yeah, this won't go for two to six. This will go probably, you know, significantly more. I think. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I think that this will be one of the watches that because it's at like this watch would sell for ten thousand dollars in a just general shop. Yeah. At Phillips, this could go for twenty. Yeah. You know, just because you're at Phillips, people are excited. Yep. You know, they're just buying. Phillips has the benefit of being Phillips. Yes. Which raises everything. Yes, exactly right. And, and don't forget, rewind to when I went. That was Phillips' inaugural auction. Mm-hmm. The Phillips watch you know, department inaugural auction. Yeah, yeah. So, like, they've done this in not a long, six years. They've become Phillips for watches. Yeah. Like, it's a name now in watches. Yeah, or the weird. name. That right there, yeah. <laughs> Oxidization on the gold. Yeah. And, and I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. that's because we're looking at 18 carat gold. Uh, I think Because you're right. solid gold does not oxidize, but the other <laughs> alloys that are mixed in do. I think you're and exactly that's what right. happens. Mm-hmm. I knew I was right. That's why. That's the way the cookie crumbles. I love when people say, "Correct me if I'm wrong," but and then go on to tell you exactly They're what they're usually is. telling you why you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, if my memory serves hmm. me correctly, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Phillips is going to do great. There are a lot of great watches here. Um, oh, you know what's crazy? So when I when I did go, um, I've so I've seen 5711s mm-hmm. before, of and I've seen uh, 3700s, the original mm-hmm. reference of the Nautilus before, mm-hmm. no doubt. And I don't think I'd ever seen them next to each other. I just don't think I had. Interesting. Um, and I, I held them next to each other. And I started to pick apart the differences. Uh, and of course, the obvious differences, the, the addition of the second hand on the 5711. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> You're like, oh, you know, of course. Oh, a second Did hand. the hand fall off on yeah. this one? <laughs> <laughs> but the, and of course, I, we always knew that the 3700 is much thinner, mm-hmm. uh, which to me is super, I mean, it makes it Makes it a better watch. Yeah. Um, but the big difference is the bezel. The bezel on the 5711 is very bulbous. Really? Yeah. Bulbous we bezel. We can pull up two photos next to each other or whatever. Yep. And and it's it's the bezel that it makes the biggest difference. I think the bezel really? of the 5711 actually looks... I don't think it's great. I think it's good. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, again, I would own a 5711. It's a cool watch yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm not like, you know... But... Next to each other, the bezel made the biggest difference. Really? Isn't that funny? Yeah. Stupid Besides little. the broken second hand. Apart from the broken second hand, right. the 3700. Exactly. Right. <laughs>
Okay. Anyway, let's move on uh, out of Phillips. Let's move on to our second subject. Yes, sir. Um, the Godfather, uh, Jacob and Co. Watch. Yes. What do you, this is the Opera Godfather watch in rose gold. I mean, what an insulting piece. <laughs> I mean, this is f- ridiculous. Wait, so what are your thoughts on it? Oh, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, pretty cool. Oh, that aside, it's great. I my favorite part about this already. We'll put the video up in the bottom. Is they're not playing the uh, music box because it literally sounds like you had your two year old try and play it on piano. Oh my god. Obviously, that doesn't, the movement there doesn't really look that great. See. <laughs> Ooh. Just picture a two-year-old hitting the <laughs> piano as hard as I can. This I like. Do this they... I, this <laughs> I need. I need this. That's, they, that's, the Syrian, that's the Syrian guy that goes and buys this watch. Marlon Brando would kill himself if he is saw this. That, is that supposed to be Marlon Brando in the watch? Yes. Could you think of anything yes. less accurate of a picture of Marlon Brando? It's a Brando? cartoon of well, Marlon Brando. Look at the color Brando. of his hair. It looks ridiculous. <laughs> With a cigar. Yeah. Does he even smoke a cigar in The Godfather? He's dead. This is just, <laughs> This is horrible. <laughs> I would have loved it if they had a, if he was standing there with a bag of oranges. Yeah. And when you press the minute repeater, the oranges spun around the wall. Oh my god! <laughs> On the day of my daughter's wedding. On the day of my daughter's wedding. No, this is a. Just, uh, this oh, is sorry. not just. <laughs> <these men. laughs> sorry, did I interrupt your thing? Go ahead. <laughs> these men did not kill your daughter. <laughs> uh-huh. You can act like a man. <laughs> Okay, back. Um, Anyways, beautiful watch. Unbe- this is unbelievably horrible. Yeah. Um, I, I couldn't believe it when I saw it. Uh-huh. Uh, I just said to myself, first of all, who licensed this? Uh, what, is it Paramount? Is that what it says in there? I, I, guess, I forget who. I mean, it's just insulting. Yeah, Paramount Pictures. They're saying basically like it was so hard to get the license or get the rights to do this, this and that. And in the bottom they say we can't wait. Like this unlocks so many different collaborations. And I was like, do you really think? Don't. I can't wait to see like... their Black Panther one. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, this is really, this is just really, really bad. Um, yeah. Yeah. I this mean, is a it's, beast. Over, it's over brand. I mean, it, mm-hmm. I don't think it could even be appropriately branded. Any amount of branding is wrong. I wonder who the buyer is. Here. I I don't know. I don't know. I all. think it's someone that buys it, wears it once, and forgets they even own it, and then their kids find it one day with a bunch of other. They think it's a toy watch. They think it's a toy yeah, yeah, watch, yeah. right? It's just some ridiculously eccentric. It's 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 Yair Marx from Entourage. You didn't say that. people. You you people who watched Entourage, Yair Marx would buy this watch. I can't like, believe this watch. Yeah, yeah, it's bizarre. Anyway. I mean, I do I do think that about most Jacob and Co. Or I guess almost all of Jacob and Co. watches. Yeah. But this one especially, I was like. Wow. Wow. That's you offensive. didn't just take an ugly watch. Like, you put a great movie on an ugly watch. Yeah. And, and a horrible sound. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Isn't no, the sound hilarious? No need to pay more attention. Let's move on to yes. um, to a different piece. Uh, today, we, we were releasing two pieces, two videos, this, and there's mm-hmm. also our most recent production yes. for uh, Jacques Drow. Yes, sir. So please walk us through briefly um, yes. w- you know, what we did, why we did it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, take... You, know, you could take it over from here. Sure. So, like Christian was saying, we did a short film, a really short film. I think our shortest it was so like far. a commercial, really. Yeah, yeah. A commercial for Jack Udrow, JD. We ran through the city with an actor and just showed off these watches that are beautiful but made to be worn. Obviously, yeah. JD has beautiful, like, repeaters and everything like that. Mm-hmm. But this is more of a skeletonized watch that is, as Christian wrote, uh, as tough as it is sleek. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, I, I, what what really struck me about this watch is, you know, we're seeing all these different brands, really mm-hmm. every brand, trying to adapt themselves to the changing definition of or the change. You know, what, what 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 the what the young guy wants, right? What yeah. what, what is yeah. cool and what is rich, mm-hmm. and 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 people are hanging up their sport jackets for cashmere joggers now, right? It's like mm-hmm. the new, all this stuff is changing culture, yeah. and I think that JD has responded really really well. Mm-hmm. Right? I think that this collection of watches was a perfect logical evolution of from their brand Mm -hmm. it makes sense in the jd catalog and it is very uh you know of the time it's it's darker it's harder Mm -hmm. um it's just a little bit more sporty and modernized Mm -hmm. yeah so these watches you know live at the intersection as as we said between Mm -hmm. you know uh you know elegance and sport in similar ways so does the um you know uh, royal oak and so does the nautilus Mm -hmm. and and Mm -hmm. so do many of these watches that are becoming popular it's Um, a good it keeps the brand language while also modernizing i think it was a really cool project for mm -hmm. you guys 
guys who haven't seen it yet, go over and watch that right after it's posted this. Today, it's posted so you probably today. did. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and take a look. Yeah. All right. Next subject. Hodinkee just released an article uh, penned by a collector, Eric Koo. Yes, sir. Um, on the micro brand uh, Noya, Noya Hida, Noya Hida, Hida. Uh, yeah. And uh, what do you think? What do you think about the piece? What do you think about the article? Uh, what are your thoughts? I thought the article was great. And I read a lot of the comments. Usually the comments is a really good place to like open up what people are actually thinking about that watch in general. Mm-hmm. And just this watch specifically, a watch that's made in 10 to 20 pieces a year by one guy with the price that you wouldn't expect for a non-in-house movement. Right. That that was the big kind of critique. That, yeah, that uh, was the big watches kind of... are twenty thousand bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh and, and and you know, that was the biggest criticism of, of the brand when it was launched. Yeah. Um I, I think I've known about the brand for about a year now, mm-hmm. I think. Mm-hmm. Um it could be a little bit older than that, but but it is a it's a micro brand, it's a small tiny, kind of manufacturer. Tiny micro, yeah. I think they're making ten watches a year. Yeah. Um they have this type one B and then this type two A. Uh I, Eric Koo just bought the type two B. I far prefer the one A. Mm-hmm. I just I think it's much prettier. That's the one B. Uh, oh, the 1B, I'm sorry. I mm-hmm. much prefer the 1B than the 2A. Um, I think that, uh, you know, the, his his defense of the watch, which, and it wasn't just a defense, it was an argument for, I mean, yeah, really, right. completely. Yeah. Um, is 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 the finishing mm-hmm. period end? Yep. Um, the the level of finishing on on these watches mm-hmm. is far superior to what you're able to buy from the big brands um, at oh, yeah. at twenty thousand dollar price point. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you're comparing it to the Calatrava, the Patrimony, et cetera, et cetera, mm-hmm. it's the it's the finishing on the dial specifically that is just out of control good. Right. Um, now that's not to say that some of those you know big brand competitors are, are slouches. Mm-hmm. I think that the um, that the traditionnel from uh, from from Vacheron is a fantastic watch mm-hmm. um, but I really do think that if you put this watch next to a lot of those pieces in front of like watch like watch people not yeah. just general people that are looking for brand mm-hmm. but under a loop mm-hmm. uh, think you're going to choose this watch which is really interesting oh yeah um, I mean I it, it's not a watch that I would buy um, I, it's, I'm just simply not there as a collector mm-hmm. um, but I can I can absolutely see and I would I would recommend the piece uh, to to people I mean it depends on who you are but yeah but to people so, it's, it's almost that level of if we're looking at the comments basically there was two things that I thought there was very interesting arguments for one was well there's an alternative that looks kind of like this watch and the response which I really liked was this is the same community that argues over a millimeter change or yeah, half right. a millimeter change right. yeah there's something similar but there's not that watch right which is the whole point point. and then the other the really important thing is that when you look at a watch like this people are saying this watch should cost x amount this amount that amount yeah that's not necessarily what you're paying for when there's 10 watches made a year you're basically paying for the entire experience of yes. that yes. like you know the guy that made it you talk to the guy that made it you now have a relationship it like keeps going on from there yep. but to think like well you know a citizen x amount or whatever goes for 5000 and looks very similar to this is a very different thought than this is a handmade watch you know yes. what i mean uh, and, and then as eric ku brought up here you know it's um to be an early adopter into these micro brands actually mm-hmm. means something yeah right uh, you right. actually are in the equation you know of whether or not he will continue to do this right so right. you know it, being a patron and, and we talked uh, to my friend salva mm-hmm. not too long ago about you know how how uh, rich families used to you know commission not just jewelry and watches for themselves but they would commission buildings in cities mm-hmm. right for the enjoyment or, or not for the enjoyment of all necessarily that that too but uh, for the preservation of genius yeah right it's just yeah. a different world mm-hmm. just a different world and, and I think that when we look at things just as the product mm-hmm. it's definitely valid but sometimes we also have to take a step back and say okay well what are the other applications here what else are we buying into right um, so yeah I think it's I think this is a beautiful one this is a type 3a yeah. this might be I think the most Loring piece that he's made. So I, would, I, would, I would go gold moon face. 3A, 1B, 2A. Really? 2A uh, is my yeah. favorite. Oh, I think that's... I, I actually dislike it. Yeah, really? Yeah. Is yeah. it the center seconds? No, I just find it very sterile. Well, okay, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Again, that, that, and, and, and Eric Koo bought that one, so he obviously disagrees with me completely. Yeah, of course. Um, but And his argument was great. Um, but um, but no, I think that, that that's that's my order. That's how I stack it. Yeah. But um, yeah, great manufacturer. I'm excited to see what comes, you know, uh, yeah. The yeah, topic, yeah. which it sucks to get into every single time, but he even says in the article, in investment... 
Thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you know, he, you know, he, you know, he kind of made the defense of it in the comment section. Yeah. Damned if you do, damned if you don't mention investment. Right. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's, you know I really, I really yeah, exactly. don't. How many people will give a shit, you know, mm-hmm. five years from now? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, I know. Eric Koo could absolutely be right. Mm-hmm. And I think that, um, you know, he said that's not why he bought it, right. which I believe. Yeah. Um, but um, put it this way. Worst case scenario, mm-hmm. I think you don't lose money. Right for twenty thousand dollars, I I really can't see these watches trading below fifteen thousand dollars. Right. So so yeah, I, I really don't think you'll lose money. That right. being said, the up, potential upside: these watches could end up being worth you know they could rip fifty a hundred thousand dollars in yeah. theory if there's the right social push and appreciation for early you know NH watches. You know, yeah, which right. has been seen before. You know, this wouldn't be odd. It hits the you can't get this. It if it just strikes that nerve to yeah. the right set of people, it's like. Okay, yeah, let's go. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Anyway, fantastic stuff. Glad mm-hmm. to see it. Agreed. Um, I think that you know, Hodinkee covered this watch a couple, like a year ago, and mm-hmm. I and I didn't love the way they covered it. It wasn't just Hodinkee. It was just every, anyone that covered it a year ago, it didn't. It, it kind of fell on flat ears. Yeah. This covering, I think, was was proper, and that he did a great job. Oh, yeah. And staying on the topic of Eric Koo... <laughs> Uh, who, um, you know, again, big watch geek. He did an episode of Hodiki's Talking Watches years mm-hmm. ago. Um, I follow him on Instagram because his Instagram is really good. Uh, he, you know, he has posted three times now in the last maybe two months, um, custom Cartiers. Yes. Right? And and I'm a, again, big, I'm a big, big Cartier fan. I'd love mm-hmm. to have a custom Cartier made. Um, and I, 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 I'm not having one made at the moment, at least, uh, because I haven't been asked to make one yet. That's, you actually, that's um, the first day I met you. That's what we custom, small talked about. Custom Cartier? Yeah. There you go. Well, yeah, I would I would love to have custom Cartier. And I, yeah, and I you know, eventually it'd be very cool to, to do with the brand. But what I think is what I think is great, and I want to show the, you know, the watches oh, yeah, themselves, because there are a couple of people, I think three people that I pulled out that, that have them, uh, and a couple of them actually. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a big difference between the watch community, yes. you know, like the the hardcore lovers, and the rest of the world. Right. And I think that the that brands should be appeasing both of those people. Yes. And and while uh, uh, the watch community is more detail oriented, and mm-hmm. they and they just they know a lot more about your brand, they care a lot more about your brand, they hold you to a higher standard, they have expectations, et cetera, et cetera. Right. They have higher expectations. Um, they're fairly easy to appease. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Good service. Mm-hmm. Be nice. And I think that custom work is totally appropriate. Oh, yeah. Doing custom work for the people that keep you um, held in extremely high esteem mm-hmm. works. Right. Right? Of course. Uh, it wasn't that long ago in the vintage watch community that Cartier wasn't really a subject. Right. It was Rolex Paddock. Yep. Right? Period. Mm-hmm. Now, if you go on you know, social media, there are two people that I would point to, which would be Eric Koo and, and uh, Aro Montanari, mm-hmm. John Goldberger, that have, I mean, if you go on their feed, it's it's a lot of Cartier. Yeah, yeah. It actually has made the brand like pr- like premier. It's maybe one of the like if, if it could even beat out Rolex, you yeah, know, yeah. in a, in a way, not necessarily mass market way, but but mm-hmm. two watch collectors, Cartier is probably even a, a larger grail in many circles. Well, there's no one that does Cartier. There's collectors? Um, there's all t- Oh, no, no. I mean, mean? just their oh. their style. Oh, yeah. Like there's obviously there's Rolex, there's Omega. They don't they don't have the same design language, but they're pretty close. You choose Rolex or Omega. You right. don't necessarily hop on Rolex versus JLC. Those are right. different watch. Or, I'm sorry, Cartier versus JLC. Right. Those are very different styles. No, Cartier is just so distinctive. So, so custom Cartiers have mm-hmm. been, you know, the new way for the brand to to give an olive branch out to to big collectors, people that have made their brand more popular, I think particularly on social media. I, oh, I think that's oh, why. Yeah. It's not just because you bought from us, it's because you've probably done a lot for us on social media yeah. um, with not being paid for it. Right. You know? right. so, uh, so anyway, Eric Koo has had, uh, top of mind, two crashes and a Sintre mm-hmm. uh, made. The first crash was in blue and gold, which I believe is for his alma mater. Mm-hmm. Um, the second crash was in black with yep. a emerald cabochon on, which Saw is that. fucking nuts. Yeah. Eric <laughs> That's Kuhn, nuts. nuts. Eric. To match his uh, jade pinky ring. I, I yeah. follow him intently. So, <laughs> so yeah. uh, very, very cool. Um, but what was really watch geeky about the second one, uh, with this black one, wasn't just the emerald or the jade. It was jade. Uh, it was the, it was the, uh, he moved Swiss made. So see the Swiss made placement? Mm-hmm. That's the same placement that they used uh, in their Bond Street uh, crash. So mm-hmm. say that, that's like the stock placement. Yep. And in his most recent custom crash, Eric placed it 
at the bottom below the six. Eric, you dog. Very you curved it on cool. the six. Oh, rather below the five and below the five. Oh, yeah. That yeah. is awesome. Yep. Much cleaner, much cooler. Um, very watch geek. That was very, yeah. very watch geeky. And then he just had his uh, tanks and tray um, made. Fantastic watch. Really beautiful. I think he did a great job. I do say, I, I do feel, however, that uh, uh, Roni, uh, Roni Madvani, who is another watch collector, he's had a couple of uh, custom Cartiers made. He did the three um, on one arm. Is that his shot? Yes. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> no, it's clearly. Um, so he's got the crash with yep. the Swiss made over there, which I don't love, but it's a beautiful, beautiful watch. Yeah. And then Eric definitely took it to the next level there. This was his tanks and tray that I think is incredible. Yeah. Uh, Breguet hands. And I believe that he actually designed this dial as well. Really? This is an unbelievable watch. Wow. That he had made in white, I believe a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. And now most recently um, in black. And yeah. that's just bananas. that's insane. Yeah, it's bananas. Yeah. So so those are his custom Cartiers, and then you've got Wei Ko, who is also a uh, a custom Cartier client who had his tanks and tray made with salmon. That to me, that's like a throwback more. It's more of a throwback. Yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, the, I don't think you know, as much work wasn't put into it. Yeah. Um. You know, it, it was a different color of kind of an existing dial, but fantastic watch. He did mm-hmm. a great job. Um. I. This is would be a dream for me. To yeah. do a custom yeah. Cartier would be a dream. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just fantastic. But more on a macro level, yeah. you know, what do you think about the, the process? Cartier is obviously either, I think they maybe have one or two people that are probably running this program. Mm-hmm. It's like kind of CRM, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, taking care of our some of our best social clients mm-hmm. and, and whatever. What do you think about that? What do you think about the watches? Watches is the easy layup. Gord, well, I guess two things. Depends on the person, I guess, designing it. Do you think Cartier has a limit? They're like, no, you, that's ridiculous. Like, don't do that. Uh, I don't think so. I, 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 I okay, doubt it. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. So then it really does depend on the designer. But from what we see and from the client that would get the invite, I basically trust that they would design a beautiful Cartier. And if it's usually just a black dial moving Swiss made, like, they can't really mess up there. I think that's gorgeous. The process, though, I need to hear more about, like, how you get to that level. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think like with anything else, mm-hmm. you probably put the feelers out there for a while, and then when they're ready, they tap you. Okay, so that's you, how I would so imagine. So you're like, I want this, or like, I I would love to get one, and then you do like, express okay. interest, mm-hmm. and you know, and interesting. There you go. How do you think we would do that? Yeah, I mean, you think I we would make a video or something. Yeah, yeah I would definitely. <laughs> I mean, but then you wonder, I mean, would they even want a service like that promoted? I doubt it. Right. You know? right. I don't even think because then they, then they probably would have to just change their infrastructure because then big clients everywhere would say, "Well, he did it." Yeah, so right. How do I do it? Right. So that might not even be good. Yeah, then it's I a service. It's, it's not, just it's not a gift, basically. The way that I see it is, uh, and I could be wrong, but mm-hmm. it's just if if they identify you as someone who is genuinely like obsessed with their brand, mm-hmm. you know, and obviously has influence or whatever it might be, yeah. they'll probably just give this to you as a gift, not the watch. The watch is a yeah, gift, right, right. but they'll allow you to do this, and that is the gift. So, okay, uh, okay. hey, I'm 25, mm-hmm. so I've got another what you 70 see. years to get this done. That's assuming well, I die. Well, 95. Yeah, assuming I die at 95, I've got 70 years. more years to get this done. Uh-huh. You know, so I think I, I'm pretty confident in yeah. it, you know, and I'll yeah. just keep um, complimenting Cartier until I die. Yeah. Or holding them to a high standard, yeah. as I do. 70 years. What do you think mine is? 12, high, yeah. 12 13 I was say Because you work a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I have no stress. <laughs> what, what, I'm what just taking I'm just faced pictures out of, of my studio. camera, my film. <laughs> I'm just like posting photos. I'm just dead at 12. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I think I love that process. Or that, I guess, that invite. Because there's there's so many different membership programs to different brands and stuff. Like you're a VIP of this. So like you yeah. come in, you get treated this way. This is Cartier, which is one of the most exclusive brands that... I can really think of that. Basically, you walk in and they're like, "Get out!" Even if you, even if you're ready, you have yeah, thirty thousand dollars in your hands. They're like, "Well, get out." I, I actually don't even like that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I find that extremely rude. I, I've been treated pretty poorly at Cartier. I think. Um, and you buy a lot of Cartier. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I've spent a lot of money. Jewelry, uh, watches, oh, like yeah. everything. Oh, I've yeah. seen it. Um, but yeah, I've been treated pretty poorly. I think because, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm. I, 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 listen, I don't know, yeah. but the way that I, you know, anecdotally and, mm-hmm. and through mm-hmm. my observation, I think that, be, again, where I live, it's in New Jersey, whatever, yeah. because I'm not a, you know, a 
19 year old girl with her dad yeah. who who you know the girl's going to bitch her dad around till he spends a ton yeah. of money which we've seen and, you know, yeah, we've seen happen all in the real time life. Yeah. at the Cartier shop by me yeah. then they're like okay he's not a priority so yeah, i don't right, like that right, right. not that i need not, not that i need white glove service it's not not yeah, my right. thing but if i have a question i don't think that it's ridiculous that it gets answered and you can ring me up real quick yeah, i don't right. think that's hard there is i i do feel like there is that certain level of like you have to have a handful of love rings, a couple of love yes. bracelets on, diamond necklaces coming down, yes. and they're like, oh, how can we help you? Yeah. But that being said, that level of exclusivity, that level is kind of annoying. But having a brand reach out to you and be like, hey, you know, we've just been watching you yeah. and like our products, and we really like that. Like, we would love to do this. You still have to buy the watch, but right. you kind of get the keys for a little bit. Exactly. That's right. really cool. I, I have a, I've, I've shared it with you, a pretty um, awesome concept for Cartier. With the flames on the side? <laughs> the rose gold flames coming out of the dial. <laughs> <laughs> I have, a, all, but I mean, for a, for a commercial, for a film piece, for a piece of sponsored oh, content. Oh, 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 I think it's uh, for your watch. No, 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 no. Um, that will release probably in December. Mm -hmm. I, think it, I think I'd like to make it one of our last pieces of 2021 yeah um it's be i think it's really gonna be, be you know what i'm talking about right yeah of course, of course yeah i think it's gonna be beautiful i'm really excited about it and um you know i i love the brand oh yeah i really do and have for since the inception of theon harris and possibly before yeah um yeah i i've just always uh, i've always looked at like old man style as enviable for some mm -hmm. reason even mm -hmm. as a kid you know i always looked at there's one photo that I, i'll try to find for you and post it here yeah that i remember being like you know it's young like 15 or whatever and and like looking at all the time of this tank normal before I even knew what a tank normal was mm -hmm. on the wrist of this older gentleman. And I was just like, wow, that is stunning. That is so freaking cool. Yeah. And all of my, you know, family members, not that they wore Cartier per se. I mean, like my older uncles, they were wearing other brands. Yeah. But, but a thin gold watch was mm -hmm. what a man wore in my family. Right, right. Um, you know, we didn't really have like, like middle-aged dudes wearing steel sports watches in my family. Yeah, right, right. We were, they were old men, mm -hmm. you know. So a gold wristwatch, a gold thin watch, was the watch that, or you know, was associated with respect and admiration. Mm -hmm. So who makes the best gold, you know, watches? It's Cartier. Yeah, right. There's you know? only one. Right. Yeah. So um. Anyway, I, that, that's I'll I'll never not be a never not be a fan. Anyway, I love the brand. I look yes. forward to working with them mm -hmm. with you in the future. Uh, and we're gonna sign off. But before we do, let's talk about Audible for a second. Yes, the sir. sponsor of today's video. Mm -hmm. Um. You, talk about it. Go. Okay. Okay, boom. Audible is an amazing service where you can listen to audiobooks, podcasts, theatrical plays, really anything that you can hear, you can find on Audible. Yeah. Specifically, what I really like right now is they have Stuff You Should Know, the podcast, just a straight podcast, which is just... I actually don't even know what that is. Okay, so they basically... The, the book itself, or the podcast itself, is Stuff I Should Know About. Yeah, yeah, right. But they'll basically, they'll take a subject, they'll be like, uh, I listened to one on Tupperware yesterday. Really? Yeah. You so know, like, you're one of the only people I've ever heard actually pronounce it Tupperware. Everyone I, always says Tupperware. Yeah. You got some weird friends? No, no everyone's... Give oh, me the Tupperware. Yeah. <laughs> Jersey. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Tupperware. So I was listening to that. Tupperware, they're, they're telling you the history about it, how Tupperware changed the way you can sell products, basically. Or basically, the house-to-house, -house, like, in the 50s, there's a bunch of housewives and yep. stuff like there. The little, like, drinking parties where someone brings, like, an item. Oh, Tupperware yeah, started sure. that, like, stemmed off to Avon, whatever. That stuff you should know. And then what was nice is Audible has the book. They just recently came out with a book. So, listen to the podcast, and then you can listen to the book right after on the same platform. And then you get to know about all the things that Michael knows about. So, if you ever run into him at a denim store, yep. you guys can talk about Tupperware. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, on the other hand, couldn't care less about Tupperware, um, but huge Ernest Hemingway fan. Mm -hmm. um, actually, <laughs> Ernest Hemingway is one of the only people I've ever actually read. <laughs> I just, I thought I had an affinity for him. I, I really mean that. I, uh, I, when I write a script, I, I write like Hemingway yeah, because course. it's the only person I've ever read. I'm picturing you going on Audible typing in the, one of the most most famous authors ever and be like, oh, thank God. Oh, awesome. thank God. He's they, I, I was afraid they, they wouldn't do have, have Ernest Hemingway and, and uh, I, I prefer, I love his short stories. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the Audible has his short stories and my favorite short story or one of my favorite short stories rather uh, is uh, The Short and Happy Life of Francis McCumber. Mm -hmm. um, long story short, it's about a husband and a wife that go on a uh, on a hunting trip mm -hmm. back when that was like a thing that like rich folks did oh, um, yeah. and there's a, there's no marital bliss there. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's a lot of tension. It's killing. It, it doesn't go well. Um, uh, for yeah. 
about anyone involved. Um, but it's a be- it's a it's just a beautiful story about about marital tension. It's it's really unbelievable. It really makes me want to be married. Reading? You know, yeah. it's like uh, after you finish that, you're like, why would I ever get married? Yeah, it right. makes no sense. You close it, or I guess shut off the audio. You look at your wife, you're like. That's but, pretty good. All things considered. <laughs> but it is available on Audible. Yes. So uh, thank you, Audible, for sponsoring this video. I'm going to go listen to you probably on my way home. Yeah. So if you're interested in Audible, you will get one credit per month with your membership that you can use to get any title. That's audiobook, that's podcast, that's theatrical play, guided meditation, theatrical anything. Theatrical plays, they, theatrical too. Play, yeah. There's not Hamilton yet, I checked. Oh. But the way that works is you get your one credit. You can pick any title, any platform to do. And to start off, you get your first 30 days free. Dude, that's what I did to begin with. First 30 days free. Because uh, I wanted to experiment. Yeah, you had you to know get know your first I mean? 30 days free. Yes. That makes me very comfortable. Now I feel, <laughs> now I feel safe. You're always I, a little... I feel like I'm in tender tender hands. Yeah, you right. You know what I mean? You go I'm on a hands massive company's website. You're like, mm, I don't know if it's safe. I don't know. It's 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 a couple dollars a month. It's, I think I need some days free first. Okay, well, let me try this out. See if I like it. Your mom's like, just get Audible. Just, I'm, like, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I have it in my budget this What month. happens if it doesn't, if I don't like it? You're going to like it. You're going to like it. Great. <laughs> You're going to like it. You're going to like it. <laughs> so if you want to check out Audible, you can click the card right up there. Yep. And go check it out. All right. Like this video and subscribe. Bye. Peace.